So John, normally when we're with you talking about burning, it's more burning ranch land pastures, but these forested areas need burning too. That's right. Uh, and again, fire is a big integral part of the ecology and the natural processes that go on in these forests and stuff throughout Oklahoma and throughout all of the U.S. Why is it important, um, you know, ecologically speaking, to burn the forest for? So again, it's it's important for for the plants and the and the wildlife that live here. That's it's a big part of it. Uh, but also. Again, there's a lot of these trees and stuff that are adapted to fire. You know, they're, they're part of a shortleaf pine, which is native to southeast Oklahoma that, that we, we burn in and burn through. That's a, it's a fire adapted species and, and fire is important for a lot of its life cycle and going on with it. And there are certain species of trees and plants that, that fire has to occur before, the, before seeds germinate and stuff gets hot enough and things to do that. Also, again, it, it keeps back uh, competition from other trees and the understory, midstory helps remove that. And then as we've seen in a lot of areas, the more fire you add to those areas, the more you open up that forest floor, you get more herbaceous growth and stuff going in there. So for livestock, also again, benefits, benefits wildlife and a lot of different species and things like that. And for a lot of producers, their land will look a lot like this, and especially in the southeastern part of the state. What are some you know, safety precautions or what's the difference in burning these type of areas as opposed to you know, rangeland in the north? So again, you know, the techniques are very similar and stuff like that. There's gonna be a little bit of differences in tweaking on some of the, the prescriptions and some of the conditions. Cause again, we don't wanna get a lot of really hot fires that get up in the crown that do damage, especially if you're into timber production and things like that within that. So you're gonna, you wanna keep this fire on the ground. So again, burning under conditions at a little, maybe a little higher humidities, but also you don't wanna reduce heat scorch. So you're actually gonna need a little more wind. And how often should producers, you know, think about burning their land? You know, again, it, it's gonna be up to their objectives of what they're wanting to do. But again, you know, we, we've got, you know, from work that we've done in Southeast Oklahoma, you know, we've got stuff that's showing we can burn annually. We can burn, you know, one day every, about every three years is a really good optimal time frame in there, and that's probably you look at historic accounts stuff too. Going through that part of the world, two to four years was uh, was a pretty good fire return interval in there. So again, but again, a lot of it depends upon their objectives and what they're wanting to do. If they're wanting to do have more livestock enterprise in there, fire a little more fire frequency. Uh, again, if they're wanting a little more timber and wildlife, they can stretch that out to three, four years and things like that. And also, again. Once they get fire into that system, you can hit it several times with fire and then you can slack off for a few more years than you can if you're just doing fire every once in a while. All right, thanks, John. If you'd like some more information about prescribed fire and forest, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.